Uh, okay. Secretary of State John Kerry. He was in Bangladesh earlier this week and he says the media should cover terrorism less. Roll tape. So if you decide one day you're going to be a terrorist and you're willing to kill yourself, you can go out and kill some people. You can make some noise. Perhaps the media would do us all a service if they didn't cover it quite as much. People wouldn't know what's going on. Did you, did you hear that? People I, wouldn't know what's going on and the crowd applauds? Yeah. That's this comes on, insane. also, remember his Charlie Hebdo attacks. There may be some rationale for the James uh, what happened with Charlie Hebdo. Twelve people died in the terrorist assault there. You should take James Taylor, Taylor. with him next time. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Now, I don't want to be uh, facetious. Sebastian Gorka is with us. He's the author of a great book, Defeating Jihad, and Sebastian joins us this morning. You know, look, we've been running this story for a couple of days now, but I'm still trying to get to grips with it. What's your reaction when you saw our Secretary of State saying, hey, cover terrorism a bit less. People won't know what's going on. Stuart, there's only two possible interpretations for that statement. Number one, inordinate naivete, that this man who is our most senior diplomat thinks that if the event isn't discussed, then somehow the terrorists will surrender. Perhaps if we hadn't had the footage of 9-11, Fort Hood or Boston or Orlando hadn't, wouldn't have occurred. So either it's inc incredible naivete or the less charitable interpretation that I lean towards is, if the media covers the terrorism, then what are people going to know? They're going to understand the rank incompetence of the last seven and a half years and understand why American counterterrorism policy is failing, how the JV team has captured territory in Syria, Iraq, Libya, how they've executed attacks in America, in France, in Brussels. That's, I think, the more likely interpretation. Don't talk about it because it'll make us look bad and it will make Hillary look bad because, remember, she was his predecessor. Do you have an interpretation for us, please, of the news that's broken over the past couple of days that the number two guy in ISIS has been killed? ISIS has confirmed that he's dead, and this morning the Russians are saying they did it. They killed him. What's the significance of that? Well, uh, it could be significant in that ISIS has been proven to be a past master at propaganda, much more so than Al-Qaeda. If you look at the magazine Dabiq, if you look at the videos they produced within hours after certain attacks, this is a first tier propaganda operation. How much this man was operationally responsible for those products, hard to tell, but now they're going to have to replace him if they want to keep recruiting people. So this could be a significant blow to them. But remember, Stuart, they've recruited more than 80,000 jihadis and more than 6,000 are Westerners who know how to use social media. So the recruiting pool is still large and it's still available. Fascinating. Sebastian Gorka, thank you very much for joining us, Sebastian. We'll thank see you again. Thank you. Congra congratulations on the poll position, Stuart. <laughs> yeah, not bad. <laughs>